Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's talk about something that's also very interesting. The high voltage transmission lines that you find everywhere that carry electricity or essentially power or energy from the power factory, from the factory where they produce electricity called the power plant. And we send along hundreds and hundreds of miles of high powered or high voltage transmission lines to eventually make it down to the houses or the factories or the places where you need that electricity. And they usually use a transformer, and I think I'm missing an, an N there, <laughs> let me rewrite that. Transformer, that's a better, better way to write it. So we have transformers that will step up the voltage to really high voltages, as much as 700,000 volts or more, in some cases over a million volts. So why do they do that? Well, let's try to explain that. So they travel a long distance, let's say 100 miles along transmission lines, then they get stepped down with another transformer to a voltage level where the houses can then receive it and not get electrocuted coming anywhere near it. So let's say we're trying to deliver power to a million homes. That's a fairly good sized city. And that requires one gigawatts of power on average, about a kilowatt per house on average. Sometimes, of course, they require more, but let's say a gigawatt of power to a million homes. And so the power uh, provided is equal to the current required to get the power there times the voltage at which you do that. And from that we can calculate the current required. So in this case it requires 1430 amps along that transmission line at 7000 volts to provide that power to those homes. Now the wire, even though it's made out of metal, typically those wires are made out of aluminum, they do have a certain amount of resistance. Not much, let's say 0.05 ohms per mile because they have a very large cross-sectional area. But over a distance of 100 miles, that's as much as 5 ohms. Now, how much power do they consume by sending the power along those transmission lines? Well, the power consumed equation is I squared times R. So we square the, the amps, the current, times the resistance, and we get 10 megawatts of power lost just in the transmission. But since we're delivering one gigawatt, that's only about 1% loss. So you still get 99% of the power to the houses, and you only lose about 1% of power along the transmission lines. Now, obviously, this is just a purely hypothetical situation, but it does represent real life pretty well. So what, happened, what would happen if we only stepped up to 100,000 volts? Well, using the same equation, to send the same amount of power to those million homes would now require a current of 10,000 amps because the power delivered is the product of the two. So when you lower the voltage, you have to increase the current. So now you're sending way more current down that wire if it's only at 100,000 volts. Now it requires 10,000 amps of current. So how much power is consumed now by the wires? Well, you take the current squared times the resistance that is now 500 megawatts. In other words, half of the power that you try to send to the houses gets consumed by the wire along the way. Not only that, the wire will get so hot, <laughs> it might melt. Uh, that's a lot of power consumed by this wire, and obviously you don't want to waste all that energy. You don't want to have potential problems with the wire getting too hot, so you want to up the voltage so you can reduce the current to the point where the power consumed is far less than what it would be if the voltage was a lot a lot lower. So even 100,000 volts, which seems like a lot of voltage, it's still way too low. You'd have way too much power loss and too little energy would make it to the homes. And so that is why they send that power way up, in some cases even over a million volts, just so that they can reduce the power loss. And that is how it's done.